go look at um, an example of setting up a new experiment for that design that we were looking at in the last session, thinking about how many mice do we need to test the effect of an intervention, chlorin on red blood cell count. So we're going to have mice that have control, that don't have the chlorin, and another group that do have it. And we've got some past data, um, just four values from a control treatment that gives us a feel for how variable the data are so we can build that into the calculation. So our inputs are, first of all, we need to say, well, what's the size of a difference we want to be able to detect? So here we'll say that if there was a 0.5 difference in red blood cell count, we would be interested in it between the groups. So that's our size of the difference we want to detect. We'll have 5% significance. Will this allow for it two-way analysis? It could go in either direction. We use Z equals 1.96. We'll use the minimum power that's considered to be acceptable, so that's 80% power. Z's going to be not, we know that Z will be 0.84 for that. And then the variability we'll take from just these four values, our estimate of the standard deviation of the data to be 0.39. So that can all go into the formulae. So if we put it into that formulae, that standard formulae I showed, plug all those numbers in, so it's quite a simple thing to do in Excel. And we come out with 9.53. So that gives the number of animals we need per group. And it's always good practice to round that up. So that means we need 10 animals, 10 mice in each of those groups. So that's what we need for the new study. It's worth mentioning, if you were going to compare three groups, you can't just say, well, I'll divide my 20 mice between the three groups. Because you're looking for differences between pairs of groups, you need 10 mice in each of those three groups. So you would need a total of 30 mice in the study. And it's becoming more common now for, and if you're applying for funding, to have to put a statement about how you've done your sample size calculation in your proposal and uh, a part of the experiment form where you're asked to justify um, the number of animals you might be using if you're doing an animal study. So a statement a bit like this would be appropriate for that study we've just designed with a sample size of 10 mice per treatment group and a true mean difference in red blood cell count of 0.5. There is an 80% power, which is an 80% chance to, to obtain a statistically significant difference between the groups at the 5% significance level. So you've said everything that's gone into your power calculation and how you've done it. You might also want to justify, if you want to give more detail, say where the variability came from, where you got that estimate from. So, And you can adapt a sentence a bit like that to suit most situations when you've done a sample size calculation. But sometimes people say to me, well, I've only got this number of mice available practicalities mean I can only do this and then the situation's a bit differently then it's a good idea to calculate what the study is likely to achieve with that number of animals and think about whether it's a valid study and to do that it's possible to turn this formula around so that it's it can be rearranged in terms of the difference that you might be able to achieve this delta or in terms of how much power you've got to obtain a particular difference. So it's helpful to know that you can do that too. If there were just six mice available per group, if we turn that formula around, we would end up with this formula, just rearranging it. And we could say that the difference that we'd be able to detect if we just had six mice per group, and we'll still go for 80% power, it would be 0.63. So we couldn't detect a difference of 0.5. But with 80% power, we, we could detect a difference of 0.63 if that was the underlying difference. So uh, we might want to think about, is that study still worthwhile? We can detect a bigger difference, but we can't detect a difference of the size we originally hoped to. And the other way around we could do it is we could say, we've got six mice per group. Uh, we'll assume we still want to detect a difference of 0.5, but how much power have we got to do that? So by Turning the, this around a bit, we can get the value of Z that would be appropriate to that size of study and that difference, and it comes out to be 0.26. So that's the value of Z. We'd have to go back to the normal distribution to find out what probability, what power that represented. So we'd find out for that 
value of z 0.26, so it's going to be quite a bit lower now. What's the area here? And it turns out that the power is 60% for that situation. So if you only got six mice, you would only have 60% power of detecting a difference of 0.5. So that's quite a low level of power. So there's a 40% chance that you'd do the study and find out absolutely nothing. And you might want to think about, is, is that study still worth doing? If you put something like that in a statement, in a proposal, and you just said 60%, I think people would, would kind of immediately zero in on that and say, well, this study's not got um, enough power. So you definitely wouldn't want to be in that situation if you're applying for funding.